Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video I'm going to show you how to update the firmware on your avatar goggles and VTX. So this is actually a re-recording. If you've seen my original avatar goggles unboxing video, you'll notice the sound at the end of it was a bit well, terrible to be honest. That was due to me hunting around under my desk and knocking the sound volume on my mixer and basically that was done at the beginning of the update video. So I'm re-recording this just to get a decent quality video out there. So in this video, we're going to update both the VTX and the goggles, and I'm going to show you the process of doing it, where to get everything from. So the first thing that we need to do is head to the CADEX website to download the firmware. Now, this is nice and easy to find. If we go to the support and go to download center, if you scroll down, you will find a firmware section just under the snow. You can see this avatar firmware version 29.3316. Now we can check which version we have on our system by going into the menu. So excuse me, I need to look at this screen while I do this. But if we go in the menu, we can go to device and device info. And you can see that I'm currently running version 283210 on both the goggles and the VTX. So they both need updating. So we know we need to do the update. So what we need to do is download the firmware. So we just click on this link and this will take us to a Google Drive. And we have the uh, different firmwares here. So we have the ground firmware, which is the goggles and the sky firmware, which is the uh, VTX. We also have this SE ground and I don't actually know what that is at the moment. So I will try and find that out for you guys. So to download these files, what we need to do is just right click on them and go to download. So I'm going to say download anyway, it's from CADEX, it's going to be fine. I'm just going to stick these on the desktop and I'm going to do the same with the Sky firmware. Right, so once they're downloaded, we don't need this page anymore. You can see they're still downloading, but I just wanted to show you there is actually documentation for the update procedure on the website. What I'm going to do is I'll come back when these files have finished downloading. OK, so we have a file, so let's get rid of this. The first thing that is recommended to do is to format the SD card on the goggles. Now, if you've got a load of video files on there, this could be a pain, so it may be worth uh, just checking that an old firmware image file isn't on there. But what I'm going to do is go through the process now of doing the, the format of the SD card. So what we're going to do is go into the menu again, and we're going to go into settings and down to record set. And in here you can see format SD card. So once we click on that, that one is the one that actually does the formatting. What we need to do now is power down the goggles and take out the SD card. Um, so being Fat Shark, it's a Fat, well, fat Shark derived goggle. The SD card is in there and it you need to sort of hook underneath it and you can see it's a pain to get out, but you can get it eventually. Right, so I've got a little adapter here for my uh, micro SD card. So I'm going to put it in there and stick it in the computer. All right, so now that's been detected, I'm going to go to Windows Explorer. And I'll drag that to the side just to give us more space. And you can see I've got this SDXC card here and it is empty. Now, what we need to do is copy the ground firmware over onto this uh, SD card. Now, this is going to be the same place where you might find old firmware. So if you see a, another file with a different number and .img, if you delete that, then that should be fine. The, the Obviously, the formatting is like a belt and braces thing. So what we're going to do is just eject this SD card and now they can go back in the goggles. Right. So for the next step, we're going to need our little pointy tool. And this is to get into the bind button. What we need to do is power on the goggles and wait for like the goggles to completely boot up again. So we have our OSD. So we're currently at the little orange logo. We're now at the loading screen. So I just come up on the computer now. So now we've got the OSD, we've got video image. We're ready so that we can continue with this step. So what we're going to do is just hold this button in for about eight seconds.
and you can see the power has just gone off so let go of a button and what this is going to start doing in a second is start beeping and when it's beeping it's doing the firmware update there we go this will go on for about five minutes so what i'm going to do is not annoy you during this video with the beeping i'm just going to come back once it's finished one thing i should mention obviously do not disconnect power when you're going through this process if you're using a battery make sure it's a fully charged lipo i'm actually using a 12 volt power bank here so i know that the power supply is not going to get interrupted unless the electricity to the house goes out so i should be pretty safe but yeah do this with a decent fully charged lipo just to make sure you don't run out of power there we go long beep means it's done so the goggles will now automatically reboot i can see in there there is the orange sort of flamey splash screen that you get so on this screen which unfortunately you can't see it's actually saying on the screen that the firmware version on um, the goggles and for vtx don't match which yeah that's obvious for us but anyway the goggles are done so what i'm going to do is power these off for a sec and next we're going to do the vtx now the vtx needs to be powered on when we connect it to usb this is the setup that i'm using so i've got the power going through the flight controller we have the bind button here which um, i will tell you about in a sec because we need to press that to do the firmware update and also on this side we have the connection for our usb port now when you got your vtx you would have got one of these cables with it so this is just a usb cable with a little adapter on the end and that just plugs into the port on here so we're going to connect this then this end we're going to plug into our usb okay so this might not work on the usb hub i've had to actually just plug it into my computer but what you'll see is we have this new usb drive f that's appeared and actually there's some video files on here from uh, random recordings that i've made so i can delete those and what we're going to do is just copy this avatar sky firmware into the root of that usb drive again once this is copied across we can eject that drive and now unplug the usb you don't need the usb cable anymore so that can be unplugged so the first thing to do is power up which of course we i'm just doing through the flight controller so the flight controller is powered up and in a sec we'll get our green flashing led on the vtx so there we go the led is flashing green now what we need to do is just hold this button in for eight seconds And that light goes out let go of the button and in a second it should start uh, lighting red so there we go it's flashing red i don't know if you can see it on camera but there you go it's well it's solid red now but that is writing the firmware it's gone out and this should be it rebooting and once it's rebooted it should start flashing green again there we go so we're flashing green it's uh, because it's looking for the bind to the goggles so now if we power our goggles back on we sh should get everything working again so again i'm going to let this boot up and then i'll try the usb-c just to make sure that everything's okay all right so we're in standby mode let's plug in that and see if we can actually get a picture up there we go so we are now on an updated firmware now for some reason the osd has disappeared Okay, so the moral of this story is if you unplug your VTX to get the unit to a uh, USB socket, um, make sure you plug the UART back in, otherwise you don't get OSD information. So yeah, that was nothing to do with the goggles at all. This was my fault completely. I just didn't plug the UART back in. I only had power, which is why I didn't have OSD. You can see on the, uh, the USB cable now that the OSD is working absolutely fine. Uh, nice and smooth and everything so yeah that's all good so this has been how to update your avatar firmware i hope you guys found the video useful if you did please remember to give it a thumbs up also click the subscribe and the bell icon 
That will not only help get this video out to more people so they know how to do this too, but also if I come up with other videos, you may well find them useful too. So, you know, everyone's a winner. But thank you very much for watching, guys. Fly models like you stole them. I'll see you on the next one.